Hello, my name is Gary Moore. I serve on the board of Samaritan Counseling Services of Sarasota, Florida, and I'd like to spend just a couple minutes telling you why. Samaritan Counseling Services um, is a mental health institution. It's Christian-based. It's not an institution, but a service, I guess is a better word. Um, and normally we serve cl our clients, I guess the typical one might be a young lady whose husband has deserted her. Uh, she has young children, is not sure how she's going to feed it and what the future looks like. She's suffering from anxiety or depression that would be very normal under the circumstances. Um, where our typical client might be called a, um, a down and outer, if you will, um, I think the reason I serve is that I was, uh, was, and I guess still am, what we might call an up and outer. Uh, you don't normally think of a person who has had 30 successful years on Wall Street and uh, can belong to a country club and so on as being an up and outer, but it's true. Um, when I was 36 years old, I was a senior vice president of a major Wall Street firm. Um, had the corner office, the two European cars, uh, the yacht, everything everyone told me that would make me happy when I was young, growing up on a farm in Kentucky, very poor. Um, but that was one of life's illusions, I guess you could say. At th age 36, I discovered that I got out of bed one morning and decided I didn't want to go to work. And all the things that everyone had told me would make me successful, uh, which is fine, um, wasn't really making me happy. I toyed with the idea of going to seminary. Um, the, after a year of psychological analysis, the uh, psychologist basically told me um, that um, a lot of my issues surrounded money as well as the issues about getting money. For example, my father was an entrepreneur and was absent most of the time I was growing up. He was loving, but he was working very hard to work us into the middle class. Due to that and the fact that after college I had to go to the army and when my father died, I had not received what the Bible might call the blessing of Abraham, if you will. And when I talk to a lot of executives in the business world, they all tell me the same thing, that they're working to gain the approval of their fathers or their mothers, which they have never received. So there was a lot of elements of, of my religious upbringing that began to make more sense to me as I experienced life and some of the downsides of it. I discovered I wasn't alone. Uh, just not long ago, one of uh, our publications, our professional publications, is called Registered Representative, which is the official name for stockbrokers. And a, a gentleman um, talked about a survey he had done among us stockbrokers 10 years ago, and he wrote, in my study 10 years ago, one of the shocking findings was that the annual salary of the advisors in my sample was positively correlated with the levels of emotional exhaustion, depression, anxiety, and depersonalization, which is defined as a lack of concern for others as well as a lack of caring for oneself. So basically, those within my sample who were making the most money were experiencing the most emotional distress. Uh, one of the ways I like to explain that these days is to say that when we're young, it's a little bit like an airplane journey. When you're on the tarmac, your greatest concern or anxiety is that you won't get off the ground. But when you're at 30,000 feet, your greatest anxiety is that you'll return to the ground too quickly. In other words, we become afraid that uh, we're going to lose some of what we have. Those fears are played on by many forces in our economy from the media to newspapers um, to uh, politicians and so on. Um, I sometimes say that you'll never read a headline that said 10,000 planes arrived safely yesterday. That's not considered news. I used to be in the newspaper business, but the old saying was, if it bleeds, it leads. What that does is it focuses us on the negative because of our human nature. One of the ways I like to explain that is this way. If I hold this up and ask you what you see, you'll probably say a sheet of paper. But if I take a pen and I draw this on and I ask what do you see, you might say a dot. Well, actually, that's not what you see. What you see is a very small dot surrounded by a very large piece of paper. Um, but it's human 
tendency to focus on the, the small negatives of life as opposed to the larger blessings. Let me put that into economic terms. Everyone today is concerned about the federal debt, for example. And I ask, have you ever heard the federal debt? And everyone says, yes, that's $14 trillion. But then I ask, do you know the value of America's assets? And everyone says, geez, I've never heard that. So we're in essence worrying about our mortgage without knowing the value of our home. But when George W. Bush left office, he estimated the value of America's assets. And if you subtract all of the debts that we owe everyone, the value of the paper, if you will, is still $125 trillion, absolutely dwarfing the federal debt. That focus on the negative is one reason that I like the fact that Samaritan um, is Christian-based. We have a tradition, um, a wellspring, if you will, from which we can draw that runs all the way back to the days of Moses. You may remember the story of the Israelites in Egypt. They dreamed of what they called the promised land for 400 years. It was described as a land of milk and honey. And when they finally got the freedom to go through the desert, they got right to the promised land, right to the edge, and they said, well, God's promised us this. We're not sure whether to believe it. So they sent human leaders out to check. They were called the 12 spies. 10 of them came back and said, yes, God was right about the uh, milk and honey, but you know, he forgot to tell us about the giants over there. Well, it's always been human nature to focus on the giants, the dot, if you will. Well, it's God's plan to focus on the milk and honey, and we still do that today. So what the scriptures do, and have church tradition has told us throughout history, is to count our, prob count our blessings rather than count our problems. Nobody has to tell us to count our problems. As Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. It'll have enough concerns of itself. Just focus on what we need to do today. I think that's very, very important today. I think that what happened um, to guys like me and a lot of the supporters of Samaritan these days even is that we're called baby boomers. There's actually a study that UCLA does of incoming freshmen into college and they ask, why are you here? When I started to college in 1968, most of us said we're here to develop a meaningful philosophy of life. About a third of all the people, usually the business students, frankly, um, said we're here to learn how to make a great deal of money. An interesting th thing happened in the late 60s is that by 1975, those lines had crossed. Two thirds of all college bound freshmen since then have been interested in making a lot of money whereas only a third of us has been, have been interested in finding a meaningful philosophy of life. What that literally suggests to me is that our nation's leaders, the people who are worried about the federal debt and so on today, basically became what's called materialist. A materialist is a person who believes that if you make money, then you will be happy. Okay, what Christianity has always said is called the great paradox, Jesus expressed it as seek first the kingdom and all this shall be added to you, is that if you're happy and content and at peace with your neighbor and so on, the prosperity will follow it. You're a materialist if you believe that you gain material things will produce spiritual rewards, but you're a spiritualist if you believe spiritual resources will produce material blessings in the long run. So it's very crucial to me um, that, that Samaritan Counseling Services is Christian based because we just approach the subject of mental well-being from a different, little different perspective, not the materialist, but the spiritual dimension. The good news I would like to share with you why I think Samaritan has such a wonderful future in America is I think more and more of us Americans are waking up to this fact that even though we're the richest nation the world's ever known, we're not as happy as we could be. Um, but is that some leading thinkers believe that while the past 50 years have been a process of secularization in our culture, that the future will be the reverse. There's actually a, a fellow at the University of Chicago named Robert Fogel, who is not a believer, uh, is a sociologist, but he has written a book called The Fourth Great Awakening that says America is in for another great spiritual reawakening. Not spiritual, actually, but actually religious, excuse me. 
The other uh, hopeful sign I've seen is that the two senior editors of The Economist magazine have actually just published a book called God is Back. One of them is not a believer, uh, but they still believe that if you look at the trends in the country that we are in the early stages of a religious reawakening where God will re-enter the scene. So I guess what I'm saying is that there's a lot of hope for us up and outers, and indeed the down and outers, we're all in this thing together. Um, if we return to a lot of the roots that produce what Jesus called the abundant life, which has, begins with the spiritual dimensions of life and results in the material dimensions of life.